Hello friends and welcome back to the tutorial of Adiano using IoT. In our last video, we have learned how to connect our ESP8266 Wi-Fi module to the internet. Similarly, today we will learn how to connect our Adiano project to the internet and fetch the data of that on internet. Let's just check it out how to do it. So now that we have made the connections and connect a Wi-Fi module to the internet. So just first go to the browser. Now in the address bar, just write thingspeak.com and enter. We can see that Thingspeak homepage is on the screen. So let's just start it. So to start, just click on here the green button that is get started for free. Just click on here and you will get a sign up option for Thingspeak. And for signing up here, you need to have a MathWorks account. So first, write your email ID, user ID, password, country, first name and last name and continue to sign up. But I do not need to sign up because I already have one ID. So I will just directly log in. I will just click on the login button. And my ID password. So now I have been signed in successfully. Let's get started with our IoT projects. So first go to channel, click on my channel. Now you can see there is a button that is for new channel because I have already made one channel before so it is showing here that I already have one channel with the name IR sensor. So we are creating a new one. So just click on new channel and it will ask you for the details. So just in the name section, right? Like uh, today we will learn about the basics. So we'll start with the IR sensor. So let's just write IR sense. In the description, it's up to you that you want to describe it or not, or just leave it. This is the field one, and there are around eight fields from one to eight. And you can name it according to your requirement. Like now, I will need only one field, so I will just write here for the IR. I will just write IR and OK. And now, there are so many. According to your need, you can write it or not but at present i do not require any of these so i'll just click on this save channel so now my channel have been created and my channel has a unique id that is the name of channel id author access private so these are some views that you can use like this is the private view that you can only access and no other one can access without your permissions. This here is a public view. This will be available only if you share your channel with someone else. This is the channel settings here. We can edit the change, edit and make changes to our channel. Here is a sharing option. Inside the sharing, it's up to you that you want to keep your channel as a private or want to share it with someone else. And now here are the API keys. These are the main functions of the IoT. And these and because of these keys only, you can access to 
anything like if you want to upload a data to the internet then you can use this write key if you want to fetch or read the data from the internet then you will use this read api key just like the unique channel id these are the unique identification of your channel for the writing and the reading operation and there are some api requests whether to feed the data or to channel feed this is for update this is for getting this is for get channel field this is for get channel status update these links we are going to use in our programming so that we can update get or modify our data on the internet or we can say on our channel so let's just get started so before starting with the programming section let's just first make the connections according to our requirement because i am using the ir sensor here so i will just give the vcc and ground to the ir sensor and one output pin of ir sensor to analog pin of my arduino board because i want to read the analog data from my ir sensor so i will just connect that pin of ir sensor to analog pin that is a0 so let's just connect them all so this is the ir sensor which we are going to be connect to our arduino board so that we can check its data on a website so let's just make the connections accordingly so you can see i have connected my ir sensor to my arduino board so now let's just make the programming so that it can upload the data on internet now that we have made all the connections or we can say we have connect the ir sensor to our arduino board so let's just get started with the programming sections so here you can see i already have the programming for my ir sensor these two lines are having two variables having a unique address like this is for updating and this is for getting channel or updating channel so these are web links that you have to just copy and paste from the website that i just showed you before like and you can see like you can see these are the links that i have pasted over there so you can use it according to your need so what i have done here is first i have initialized my variable ir and i have stored a value that is a0 means i have stored my pin number a0 that is the analog pin to the ir variable and now i am writing this float voltage and now here are the two strings one is a and the other is z having a link this one is to update and here i have pasted the write api key so that i can write the data of my project to the internet and here i have written this field one means which field i am using to show the data and here z is having a web link to just connect our arduino board to the website or to where it will upload the data or we can say it will tell us the path where a channel is so that it can upload the data over there and next is void setup and inside that i have just written serial dot begin within brackets 115200 115200 is the baud rate for a esp8266 wifi module so i have just written it so that i can check it serially also and now here is void loop and inside void loop i have written many values like first voltage voltage i have initialized it as a float value so that i can get the decimal values also and inside that voltage i am just storing the value of ir sensor 
that I will be reading from my analog pin. So I am checking it for the analog output. So that's why I have written here analog read within brackets IR. IR is equals to A0. So I am checking it on pin number A0 that is the analog pin. And in the next line I have just converted the value. And here I have just converted the values so that I can display it on a website or we can say on a channel. And in the next line, I have initialized a variable voltage underscore buffer, which is an array of length 16. And in the next line, where is voltage x d2 str f means I am converting it to string values so that I can get the output over there. For that I have written here voltage comma 4 comma 1 comma voltage underscore buffer. Here I will write my this voltage value and voltage buffer is the buffer which is being converted as a string. Or we can say here our string value will be stored. So this is just to convert a digital value to a string value. And now in the next line here is string post str. And now here I have written a plus voltage x plus z means firstly I am updating it and checking it where to update it. And for updating it is just checking for the API key because API key defines a channel so that it can upload the data at the right position or we can say or to read the data from the right place. And this is for the checking part where to upload our data and to which channel it has to upload it and here it is the field which defines that in which field it will upload the data. So this is just for checking the channel and this is the voltage x. Voltage x is the value that it will store in a field 1 and z it creates a web link so that it can upload or update the data on a channel. And in the next line, we have started with the 80 commands. We have written serial dot print ln within brackets 80. 80 is just for checking that whether the device is working or not. And given a delay of two seconds, serial dot print 80 plus CIP start as we have already discussed before. API dot thingspeak dot com it will just showing us that where it will upload and where it will link our data, where it will start our data. And here in the line 80 plus CIP start. At the end it is written slash r slash n. It defines that anything that is written inside this within the quotations will be read as a command so that it will just read these commands and perform an operation accordingly and given a delay after that CIP lens giving a value to the CIP send that what data it will send to the channel 80 plus CIP send within brackets it is the data that we have just obtained over here and up again that it is a command and the next line serial dot print within bracket CIP length. So it will upload this data and it will also print it on a serial monitor. And in the next line post str it will print this value also. Serial dot print 80 plus RST. 80 is RST for just restarting our Wi-Fi, disconnecting and reconnecting our Wi-Fi. And again a delay of 3 seconds. So this was our programming. So let's just change our API key to link our project to the internet. So let's just copy this write key because now we want to just upload the data. So I will just paste this. So I have just pasted this value. And let's just verify this. So the compilation is done. So let's just upload the program.
so the uploading is done so now let's just check whether a program is working or not now let's just go to the website just go to the private view here we can see that a graph is being built which is showing a value and the variation between the values until now there are three entries so it has just shown three values after every 20 seconds it will just add a new entry to our channel and it will just show where so you can see there was only three entries till now and now we are having a new value so similarly you can get as many as values you want and use it according to your need to make an innovative project so this was it for today hope you liked my video if you like my video please click on the like button and if you have any queries regarding my project or regarding this video just type it in the comment box and please subscribe to my channel thanks for watching this video